Hi everybody, welcome back to This Old Bible. No, I haven't lost it, but I am coming to you live from in front of a manure spreader uh, this week. Most of the time I try to have like kind of a cool scenic background or maybe I'll do a video with one of the tractors. Um, most of the time I'm leaning on the old Ford 8 den, but this week, manure spreader. And you're probably wondering why. I understand. Well, let me tell you a little story. Uh, last night, which would have been Saturday, uh, Saturday night, December 4th, I guess, I had the opportunity to attend here in Stonebro a thing called Tractors and Tinsel. And if you've never had the opportunity to go to such a thing, it is a lot of fun. It's great, uh, wonderful way to celebrate the Christmas season at our local fairgrounds. And I've done a video from there in the past. They take farm equipment from all the big farms, local farms around here, and some of the small farms too. Uh, put Christmas lights on them, uh, all kinds of Christmas displays. The local fire department, Stormboro, Sandy Lake, Jackson Center, uh, they bring in their rigs, uh, doll them all up, and uh, have the aerial trucks up in the air, and uh, it's just, it's a great thing. Christmas lights everywhere, Christmas displays, um, and it's all done uh, as part of a food drive for a local charity, uh, which again is a great thing. So everybody going through, either donate cash or donate a food item, and uh, away you go. And as I was driving through there, Oh my goodness, some of the farm equipment. Um, it's just amazing, the technology, the size of some of these things. Um, I can't imagine uh, the, the cost of some of these things. Some of these track, big tractors on tracks. Uh, there were excavators. Uh, let's see, what? oh, combines. Um, just all kinds of beautiful equipment. There was also some old equipment there. I saw a Ford 8N that was similar to what I have, an old case tractor. Uh, that some friends of ours have uh, with a nice display there. So it was a great thing. That being said, you're probably wondering, well, okay, this is not a multi-hundred thousand dollar piece of farm equipment. Um, to be honest, this isn't even mine. Uh, this is a friend of my son's uh, that he borrows and uses on occasion um, to spread on our fields here, but uh, that, that's a long story. Uh, so, this is not high-tech farm equipment, um, and when it comes to beauty of farm equipment, some of that stuff, you know, that new stuff, are really good looking, you know, some of those uh, combines are gorgeous. They have uh, nice paint jobs with stripes on them, just in the air conditioning and radio inside and all kinds of techno technological gadgets and all that good stuff. Not this, this is not one of those pieces. Um, so needless to say, this did not go to the fairground with lights on it um, and no one driving by would be awed or amazed by a manure spreader. I do have a point this week and this is it. Now, Cause you're wondering by now, it's like, okay, what in the world's this guy dragging us into this time? My point is this, life is sometimes like that farm equipment I saw last night. And if you're blessed, hopefully more of your days are like that farm equipment. More of your days are, are bright and, and colorful and, and great. Um, but let's face it, sometimes our days are like this piece of farm equipment. Um, not necessarily glorious, not necessarily wonderful, um, not necessarily awe-inspiring, but nonetheless, and here's the key, necessary. Now, as a truck goes past me here, I'll give that a second. There we go, the milk truck again. So, necessary. Just like the expensive, nice, shiny, beautiful farm equipment I saw last night that's necessary to keep some of these large farm operations running. This is also a necessary piece of equipment on a farm. Now, I understand uh, on the big farms, certainly we're not dealing with, with something this old um, and something this small. But nonetheless, this one works and gets the job done. Now, biblical tie-in, where am I going with this? Well. Again, God provides us with periods in our lives 
God provides us with seasons in our lives where things are good, things are wonderful, and we should be thanking Him endlessly for that. But there are times, and I'm telling you, these past two years, I think there have been a lot of people that can relate to this piece of equipment right here and its job. In the past two years, there have been a lot of painful things happen, not only locally and to the local families that I know, um, but nationally in our country, throughout the world, things that we probably haven't even heard of. There has been a lot of hurt in 2020 and 2021. Um, again, there are people I know that have lost multiple family members. Um, there has been sickness. There have been restrictions. There have been loss of business. There, I, you, you can read the headlines on your own. You don't need me to spew it to you. So, a lot of times life's like this. But these hardships, these times of negativity, these times that are difficult, these times that are struggles, God places them in our life, our lives because it's necessary, just like this piece of equipment right here. Why is it necessary? Because without hardship, we don't really learn to lean on God. And that's my point this week. That's the whole enchilada. The fact that we have to lean on God for everything. I'm going to share a story with you about myself. I was the guy years ago that used to sit in church. And, you know, in church when you have prayer time, people have prayer requests and so on. And I would listen to the different prayer requests. And I'm telling you this, and it's wrong, and it was a sin, and I put it out there. I would listen, and I would, at the time, weigh people's prayer requests and judge them. I did that. I would listen, and if somebody would say, you know, as their prayer request raised their hand and they would mention somebody that had a sickness or an illness, you know, I was all in, absolutely, you know. But the person would raise their hand and say something like, oh, you know, uh, there was a deer in the road this morning that I missed, um, and I thank God for protecting me and so on. I would sit and cast judgment. I would sit and say, do we really need to bother God about deer on the highway and about missing them? The answer is yes. We need to take everything to God. We need to lean on Him for everything at all times and not lean on ourselves. And that's a difficult concept for us to deal with sometimes. So even the most trivial things, the smallest things, God wants to hear from you. God wants to hear those things. God wants the opportunity to help us through. He wants us to learn to lean on Him. So... Days that are like the manure spreader that come. Seasons that are like the manure spreader that are not glorious, that are not wonderful, are just as necessary as a piece of equipment like this to a farm. It's not the thing that people... Children are not going to flock if they come visit the farm to the manure spreader. They're going to go to the tractors to check it out. They're going to go to the, the big equipment, the, the combines and so on. Not this. But... This is just as necessary. Just like the negative periods in our life, our lives are necessary. Okay? So I have some scripture. <laughs> You're all like, get to the point now. Okay, here it comes. So, in our scripture, I am in 2 Corinthians. Okay? And, oh, here we go. The wind getting me. I'm in 2 Corinthians, and you know what? If I hold this all the way down, maybe on the ground, I'll be able to see it without my glasses. I'm not going to put my glasses on, so bear with me. Uh, 2 Corinthians, I'm looking at chapter 1, and I am in verses 8 through 11. Remember, of course, this is the Word of God. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the providence of Asia. We were under great pressure far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. I'm going to repeat that as I sometimes do. 
Indeed, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. So a couple points there to highlight. The first point is, again, that we are not to rely on ourselves. And sometimes when times are good, I do that. I'll start relying on myself to do this and do that. Things are good. Mm -mm. No. The hard times, that's what we're to learn from the hard times. That that's to carry on through all the other days too. When things start easing up, when things start getting better, that's not the time for us to turn to relying on ourselves again. We've got to keep casting things on God. He wants it. Bring it on. He can fix any problem. This world's nothing to him as far as taking care of problems. This is easy. Um, then, down below it says, um, Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. In answer to the prayers of many. Prayer works. As, again, we go through this difficult season, it's also a good season, too. It's the Christmas season. Uh, but... Obviously, again, there's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of sickness in our country. Um, there's a lot of, uh, of discord, um, folks that don't necessarily get along real well. Um, the prayers of many, we can pray our way through this and rely on God. He is always going to listen. He's going to be there. Now, if you are new to my channel and you are a non-believer, let me share this with you. This relying on God, this door is open to you Okay? And you can become a believer by very simply believing that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He took your sins away. Also believing that Jesus was not only a man, but he was also God here on earth. Okay? And then admitting that, yeah, you're a sinner, you do things wrong, and I am. Um, just because I'm a believer doesn't mean that I turned, there was some perfect switch that I flipped and I became a perfect person. I didn't. I became filled with the Holy Spirit that helps guide me in right and wrong. Um, and I listen to it as best I can. Sometimes I screw up. And when I do, I ask for forgiveness and then repent and try not to commit that sin again. Those things are vitally important. So as we go into not only the Christmas season, but also a season that's hard for some people. Many people have experienced loss during this time. Um, just think that if this time is a difficult time for you as we go through or something recently has happened um, that has made things difficult for you, lean on God. That's why you're in this time. He doesn't uh, permit these things to happen to be mean to us. No, this is a way of teaching us and teaching us a reliance upon him. So with that, I'm going to now leave the manure spreader and next week I'll probably have a, a more scenic view perhaps. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But anyway, um, as we're in the holiday season, I hope you're having a joyous season. Um, I hope you have a great week and God bless you and we'll see you next week. Take care.